Hello there. Right, I'm not sure if I'm live or not. I'm just sitting here on a Sunday evening um, and I'm pondering what people are thinking about really when it comes to investments. So I've got a question for you. What would you do if you had £100,000 cash sitting in your bank? What would you do with it? Would you invest it in property? Would you put it into the stock market? Would you buy some crypto, different types of crypto? Um, would you um, put it into your pension? Um, would you gift it to anybody? So, so let's just try to find out what people would do with it. Let me know, leave me the uh, comments below and let me know what you would do if you had a hundred thousand pounds right now and how you would invest it. Would you invest it with other people maybe? Um, yeah, interesting. Um, because what's happening is with, under my videos, a lot of people are coming up with ideas. You should be doing this, you should be doing that, you should be doing this. So um, I thought well, I'll just do a live um, and I'm bored. And I thought, well, just try to find out what everybody else thinks uh, is a good idea. The problem is, obviously, property right now, um, you know, it's it's tough because the the market's funny. Buy to let market's really uh, in, in, in a bad shape right now. Um, but there are people that are making money out of it. You know, there are people that are doing conversions, HMOs, all sorts of things. Oh, we've got here somebody saying they're going to they're going to they would buy gold be interesting okay if it's going to be gold um will it be physical gold or will it will you go down the etf route and maybe buy um, a a gold fund as such be interesting to know about that actually because obviously if you're going to buy a physical gold are you then going to rely on the entity that's going to hold the gold for you or are you going to put it under your bed are you going to put it in a safety deposit box um all right physical okay uh, not with the banks gold crypto and land okay well that's three so what would you do would you then split it into you know some crypto some land land when you say land is that property or is that land land um and then obviously gold so that's interesting okay so uh, another person is talking about gold here um safe box okay totally right okay so this person definitely doesn't doesn't trust the the entities and not an etf so um they're gonna they're gonna go down the uh the gold route um yeah i mean obviously the price of gold can be manipulated i don't know if you guys have ever watched the um uh, the rothschilds documentary and how gold is gold prices are set globally but um yeah, no, obviously that's one of the one of the things at the moment especially as the currency markets are um, people are going to be respirating on the US dollar and the currencies. Obviously, traditional mediums like gold uh, and silver and a lot of those, um, and copper and nickel, a lot of those things are going to be more and more prevalent. Okay, gold, British sovereigns. All right, okay, thanks, Joe. Thanks for letting me know. It's interesting, isn't it? 50% crypto. Um, this is 619YZ, I think. He's saying 50% crypto, 40% land. And property of 10% in gold. Okay, that's interesting. So, okay, so if you're going to go down the crypto route, let's let's get into it a little bit. I'm bored. Um, if you're going to go down the crypto, would you just go for the, you know, Bitcoin, the Ethereum, uh, or would you go down some of the, you know, some of the weird and wacky? I mean, there's so many at the moment. I don't understand the market. Um, but that's, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure if I'm still live. Am I still live? I think I am, but I can't read for some reason. Tap to retry. Let's see what it's saying. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, so in regards to property, would you then go down there? Would you be an investor in someone? So would you would you like be open to people approaching you for deals or would you then put it into a, um, you know, I've heard property funds. Um, there are some property funds out there. There's also peer-to-peer -peer lenders. So you can actually give your money to peer-to-peer -peer lenders. So, um, be interesting in property let for students because i live in nottingham and the university is popular with the students very very uh, good point point. and when i was um, when i was uh, i went to art college i went to a place called um, farnham and all around it all the all the places around there there was one guy and he basically owned the whole town and all the students used to live i mean these horrible sort of houses they weren't very nice but there was student accommodation and he absolutely made a killing out of it 
Um, and I, I know I've got many clients that do quite well out of student accommodation, HMOs, obviously with the whole HMO standard. So when you're saying Nottingham, I'm not sure. I think Nottingham is an Article 4 area, so I'm not sure how that works out. But obviously there are, you know, there are some places that you don't need the license, so that could work. And there are some lenders that will give you student accommodation, uh, uh, not treat it as a HMO, it's like BM Solutions. Um, depends on the risk tolerance. If you're prepared for due diligence, uh, altcoin will utility BTC, but never leave it on a platform. Land is being okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, the platform. I'm not sure if you've um, uh, if you guys are aware, but Coinbase has had a lawsuit against them. So has Binance. So there are some lawsuits going around, and I, I believe o over half of the crypto is actually held in Coinbase. So it'll be interesting to see how they try to screw those platforms out of it, because ultimately the US and the UK and all the big governments. They don't want crypto. They don't want it. They want their own currency. They're going to probably launch their own digital currency somehow. Uh, and there is some conspiracy theory to say uh, many, much of the erythium and, and, and um, Bitcoin is actually held by you know the, the governments and, and, and secret societies. Uh, crypto on the wallet. Okay, it'd be interesting because I've got some crypto in on Coinbase, but um, I'm not sure... Uh, I'm not sure I understand the wallet situation, so I need I need to get I need to educate me. I might I might start watching some of the other videos out there on this. Anyone would buy a um, anything else apart from that. So was there anything else that you you think is is the way forward? Really going forward, Let, let's be honest. For the last 20, 30, 40 years, I mean, majority of the millionaires out there made their money out of property. Do you still think property is? Um, a viable option for people to work, become wealthy. Um, do you still think going forward? Let's be honest. A mortgage. This is very. It's interesting because when I have a conversation with clients and go, do you want a twenty-year mortgage? Do you want a twenty-five-year mortgage? Do you want a thirty-year mortgage? Do are people actually aware of what the hell is going to happen in twenty years' time? Where are we? Where are we going to work? What jobs are we going to have? What occupation? I know for a fact a mortgage broker job is not going to be around in 20 years' time. There'll be an automated system. There'll be a chatbot. I'll be a chatbot. My business, my line of work will be a chatbot. Will there be many drivers? I doubt it. How will accommodation be? How will universities be? The chap that said I'm going to invest in, in, in student accommodation and stuff. Let's look ahead. Let's look ahead, you know, a long time. Do we think people are still going to go to universities? Uh, do we think the market, you know, at the moment, look at the work market, people working from home. So it'd be interesting. Property long term, but you need more upfront capital than you ever you do. Okay, due diligence is an investment. Yeah, absolutely. You know, listen, there's so many people trying to, you know, I get approached all the time from people sort of wanting me to invest in certain things or do a JV. You get the finance, you do this, do this, that. And we get so many sort of opportunities come up. But a lot of it, once you start scrutinizing a thing, there's a reason why they're approaching you and they're not approaching the bank. There's a reason. There's certain things generally. Um, sometimes it could be it could be good opportunities. I know people have made money out of them, but um, due diligence is key. We will need some somewhere to stay yes so uh, that's important so joe is basically saying yeah basically ultimately we need somewhere to stay yes and, and this is the argument in regards to house prices oh my god house prices have gone out of control they have got out of control but what are you going to do you're going to live somewhere and that's the argument with a lot of the property people that have got into hmos they believe we're the, the way the nature of our society is changing is you know, room lets, on swinged rooms, those things, rather than, you know, having your own flat, that's going to be out of reach. But having your own room within a nice property, that could be within reach. So I believe the shared accommodation is actually a market that will grow and grow and grow. Unfortunately, there's a lot of shy, charlatan shysters within that market as well. Um, so it does need to be cleaned up. But there are lots of professional outfits now, companies that are really trying to bring it up market, do a little bit more with it rather than a you know, run down property. They're doing some fantastic work. I know there are some uh, there are some companies out there. Um, I've been I, I don't know these people, actually. I've, I've been watching some uh, reels on Instagram on a company called Savoy. They do a lot of HMO conversions and a lot of things like that. 
they seem to be doing a lot of things uh, around that and there's a lot of companies that have got really well into the hmo conversion stuff and i think there is some room within that long term they're making it harder for landlords oh no doubt no doubt they're making it harder for land they don't want landlords they don't want they want the big corporations okay you know as well as i knew this government has been bought out every government i'm not talking about just this government whether it's conservative labor listen big money rules okay and the way it's going to go is you only have to look in america the what's happening in america is big corporations are coming up and buying blocks and blocks and blocks you know i think shared ownership is the first step to that okay shared ownership is the first step towards that big firms coming in big units big developments you get to live there but you will be a tenant and and i think that's where it's going to end up so they don't want the small landlords around they really don't want them they they want to push things further and further and we are one one change away within the limited company and tax rules away from things like that okay so you know all they have to do look, look what they did i mean the the fact that they removed mortgage interest okay um at a low period knowing interest rates will always bounce back and going to be higher they made all those changes made people comfortable with it and now wait and see people the pain that people have to go through so the smaller guys are just they just haven't got the appetite anymore you know to stay in that market and they're making it harder they definitely are making it harder look at lloyd's bank yeah absolutely lloyd's bank lots of other lenders as well that are um getting into um becoming landlords you know legal and general is another big provider who is you know going to house building um and you're going to see them i mean i'm not talking these the lloyd's banks although they're a big bank they are mickey mouse compared to blackrock okay they're mickey mouse compared to the big corporations i mean huge corporations that are waiting waiting on the sidelines to come into the market so let's wait and see because there will be changes and i think the the way they will position it is around tax changes drive people out interest rates will be high costs will be high they're not gonna no one no one's gonna go on the street no one's gonna go on the street and argue for the landlord you know no one's gonna fight for that landlord are they let's be honest right it's easy pickings it's easy pickings but those people and i often when i write videos and when i do videos about landlords and bike lets there is always somebody writing saying good riddance they're leeching off the back of first-time buyers they're going to do this for so what they think is because when landlords go away first-time buyers are going to be popping up everywhere and they're going to sweep up the properties no they're not okay unfortunately there are people that are destined to be tenants okay and this is the reality of it right I deal with them all the time. I deal with people that at one point they had credit issues. At one point they were definitely not the can right candidate to be a homeowner. Maybe they got things sorted out and generally when I speak to them they had problems 3-4 years ago. They've got things sorted out and now they want to be it. But there's a lot of people that are simply not ready to be landlords. Oh sorry, homeowners. Okay, so it's all great saying, oh my God, landlords are leeching off the back of this and they should be, we should get rid of them. However, they're not. There's a lot of people out there that are simply not ready. And that's the truth of it. Um, let's see what else everybody says. Will the tax effect going forward being landlords? Will it be a tax efficient going forward? I, I don't I don't think the way the way things are going, I don't think it is going to be tax efficient. Unless you are, like I said, unless you are a big landlord, okay, and you can afford tax advice and put it into trust and go offshore and do clever things around it yeah maybe but you know you've got to get to that stage if you're a two three person you know two by to let three by to let it's very difficult and you'll probably have to go through that and you've got to make a decision am i going to expand on these properties and try to aspire to be a larger landlord so i can make it efficient so the economies of scale can actually work for me or do you know what uh, uh, do I sell up? But of course, if you sell up, you've got capital gains tax. And guess what they're doing with that? Capital gains tax, and um, you've got mm. the uh, the reliefs, they're all being reduced. So they're trying to get it both ways. And obviously, when you die, and I've got a lot of, believe it or not, I get a lot of clients that are, um, their parents have passed away. Dad's had 10 properties. Dad, mum's had four properties, and they've got mortgages on them. They're now trying to go through probate. They need refinancing because the existing lender needs paying off. There's all sorts of messiness, right? And people obviously have not 
done in estate planning. Those people have not thought of themselves as the caliber of to do estate planning. They should have. OK, because what's happening now is the lawyers and the children and everybody's trying to deal with everything. And it's an absolute mess and it's costing a lot more. So uh, estate planning is going to be key. Is it worth holding a capital growth if you are barely breaking even after the tax? Rate? Yeah, of course. So this is the problem, right? The problem is um, people are just going to look at it and go, look, by the time. Listen, let me tell you something. I've just got fences for one of my buy to lets. OK, I just paid for fences five grand the whole thing cost me five thousand pounds okay i think cost me about two thousand seven hundred pounds for the fencing and the poles and bits and pieces another couple of thousand pounds left that's five thousand pounds okay five thousand pounds is gone right the boiler went on it not long ago there was a leak in the kitchen not that long ago previous to that i had problems with tenants so what you will find is there's only so much someone can do okay so by the time you look at it and go do you know what I will go and invest it into crypto. I will go and invest it in something else. I will go and put it in my pension. I would go and buy it in gold. Uh, because at one point, or I'd go, I'd, I'd invest abroad. You know, I've got clients that are investing in Dubai at the moment. They're buying properties in Dubai. They go, well, do you know what? If I'm going to do this, you know, I'll go and buy a property over there. So it's interesting. But but then I have got a lot of buy-to-let applicants as well. I'm, I've got a lot of buy-to-let mortgages that I'm doing not necessarily, I would say, a lot in London because the rental calculus is not work, but around the country, I've got people that are making good rental yields. They're buying within a limited company structure. They've got the structure right, mm -hmm. and they're still mm -hmm. making money, okay? I've got people that are doing, they just specialize in doing HMOs, buying your three-bed semi, converting into a six-bed HMO, making good rental yields. Capital gains tax, I'm worried about with the new regime. Absolutely right. Capital gains tax, they are absolutely, listen, they're off the, it's not going to get better. This is a doom and gloom. But I don't think it's going to get better, is it? Is is life, do we think the next... It'll be interesting. Let, leave a comment here, right? Do you think the next five years, things are going to get better or things are going to get worse? Let me know what you think, realistically. And look back for the last five years and, and think, have things got better in your life personally and you know, have they got better for you financially or have they got worse? Um, it'd be interesting. Worse. There you go. Uh, Osgar is saying worse. I don't personally have enough cash flow. So, Joe, let's have a look. I don't personally have enough cash flow to invest in any more buy to less right now. Last year, I had to pay for a new roof, da -da -da, new kitchen, new boiler. I'm just sitting tight. Yeah, you and you and a lot of people. And this is the problem, right? People stop spending, improving those properties, doing things, because you have to cut back because you don't know where the bloody hell the interest rates are going to go, where your next boiler problem is going to be, where the next leak is going to be, where the next non-paying tenant that you've got to go to court. So this is what I've tried. When I try to explain this to some first-time buyers who are, you know, obviously they've got landlords right now, they're paying rent. It's very hard to try to explain that to them to say, look, it's a tough, tough market and it will be. Yes, landlords have done well. Let's be honest. Let's look at the other way, right? They've been sitting on 2% interest rates, right? And they've been doing well out of it. Landlords have done well out of this in the last 10, 15 years since the last crash. And I was around the last crash. I was in the mortgage industry in the last crash. Um, they did, they've did. they done well out of, it, out of it. So yes, there's a bit of pain here, but that's because they've done generally well out of it. Now, sure, if you've only got into the market last year or the year before, then obviously uh, now you're seeing a tough times. When you factor in the social score, interest rates, uh, what better, the best future. Yeah, you're right. Start cutting the cost of maintenance as the management companies are not going to do this for you. Yes, you're right. Um, you're right, yeah. I mean, you've got, you've got to be more hands-on. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um what do you guys think about um, the stock that we've got in the UK? Because there is there's a, there is obviously doom and gloom, but they're not building enough houses. And you know, as someone who has got you know, who basically came to this country as a young child, um, there is still lots of people coming into this country, and there are lots of people that need housing. Um, and the government's selling their right to buy. So all those council houses are being sold. 
they're not building enough houses and when they are building houses they're not building houses they're building flats so the, what do you guys think about the stock left in the country and do you think that will turn into rentals eventually and people got to live somewhere if they're not affordable to buy do you think you're being a push against Airbnb? yeah it's interesting i've I don't really, I've never really quite, I've done the mortgages, don't get me wrong, but I've never really quite understood the short-term Airbnb market. I know people have done very well out of it. Um, I don't know if I'm just a little bit too cautious, but when I, you know, when you speak to the leaseholders, at, you know, I've got a flat near the underground. I could put it as an Airbnb, but technically you're breaking a few things here. One, if you've got a normal mortgage, a buy-to-let mortgage, you're breaking their rules because they don't allow short-term lets. Two, you're breaking the freeholders' uh, lease lease rules. A lot of them do not allow short-term lets or sublets or however they call it. So you're breaking these rules, and and I think everyone's been putting a blind eye out of it. There are lenders that will do it. Don't get me wrong. There are some genuine lenders that will allow short-term lets and so forth, but. I think a lot of those Airbnbs are just on buy to let mortgages. And something's got to give. And if to, for you to get proper insurance, you've got to get insurance. So if you're going to do it properly, um, yeah, I, I don't know how it I don't know how it works, but I just think there's a lot of dodginess within that market that needs to come out. But I'm surprised it hasn't come out yet. I'm surprised lenders are turning a blind eye to it, the freeholders, the leaseholders. I'm just, I, I, I don't, maybe I've got things wrong. Maybe I don't understand the market. And I, I'm the first one to say I don't understand that market very well. But I think there's a lot of blagging going on. What do you guys think? Taking a lodger. Yeah, that's it. Taking a lodger. Uh, in the return of the Airbnb is worth the risk. The rental return on Airbnb is worth the risk. Okay, that's interesting. It works out like 10 times more than normal HMO. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. First of all, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I watch these YouTube videos and these people are saying, yeah, I've turned this property into service accommodation. I'm just baffled where how many of these service accommodations at the moment are going on. And they're not like, they're not in Hyde Park. These are like, you know, they're not in central London or they're not in central somewhere. They're all out in a stick somewhere, not necessarily in a holiday resort or something like that they're like in the, like outskirts of birmingham or oh, i've done it i just don't understand how how they're being fooled but yeah, like i said i need to understand that market better i do i know it from a mortgage perspective i do mortgages i do obviously property side of things and that, but as a landlord i don't understand it very well i need to better i don't understand crypto market and will my best avoid it yeah so joe yeah so um yeah, crypto is interesting because every time I've bought, I've I've lost money on it. To be honest with you, I don't think I've ever made money on crypto. <laughs> Whenever I've bought, I haven't made any money. I know lots of people have, but I'm, I'm one that I certainly can say I've bought crypto and I haven't made money on it. If you don't have the research, it, I would advise not to touch it. Oh yeah, you're right. So if you don't have the time to research things, yeah, you should you should steer clear. Anyway, guys, this is my Sunday night Sunday night rant um what else the kids are asleep so uh what else have we got going on anybody else want to say anything here anyone else want to set me up a new topic or should we all uh call, call it a night and go back to work and tomorrow i'll have lots of new mortgage customers obviously wanting to complete you know what happens on a monday is first thing on monday morning you've always got a couple of clients that are trying to you know buy or sell their house that day Pyam, you need to do this. Can you phone the lender? My solicitor hasn't come back to me. Can you find out what else? How long? Can you get me an extension? Normally, that Monday, from Monday, from 9 o'clock to about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, that's what we're having to deal with. Um, people trying to get extensions and doing this. Will they bring back stamp duty holiday? Ah, interesting. Good point. I think the government, I think the government has to do something, right? Because the market is is not great certainly from a uh, and you can see there's going to be a slowdown and you know i've I watched that what was it called moving with charlie and there's another one called the honest money there's a few of these channels that are quite pessimistic around the property market and i've watched their stuff and i think they make valid points 
Um, and I made a video to say, look, the government still can do certain things. Um, when COVID hit, I was honestly, our business before COVID hit, it was, uh, well, COVID had hit, sorry, COVID had hit. And our business was really not doing well for the first few months. And then all of a sudden, stamp duty holiday came in and it just flew. The market flew. Um, and I think the government can still do it if they're willing to borrow. Because remember, the government are beheld to the international markets. We don't actually, you know, all that stuff about Brexit. I don't know what you guys stand. All that stuff about we want to stand our own two feet. We want to decide for ourselves. Let's be honest, right? If you looked at the recent visit from Sunak to Biden, okay, if you saw it, if you watched that video of the press conference, he was like a lapdog in front of, you know, it was like it was like a little kid in front of the big boys. And the reality is we are beheld to the international markets, the money markets and the US economy and other major economies. And unfortunately, although we're the fifth biggest economy in the world, we are very much interlinked with the US economy. So no matter what they say, I think they, they've got certain things they can do. But we saw with uh, Cozzi's uh, disaster um, budget, if they don't like it, you're gone and you're screwed and basically bugger off to your economy. Um, so and that showed that showed how entwined we are and all the Brexit stuff. And of course, about immigration stuff, it was it was there and valid. But ultimately, it was about we're going to take back control. OK, well, we saw how control, you know, if someone wanted it, if a government at the end of the day, a democratic elected government wanted to do something, the money market spent piss off. You're not doing that. There's no way you're going to do that. We're going to write you. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to shock the market. And all of a sudden, what happened? They were gone. They were gone. Okay. And that's the reality of the thing. So they have got certain things they can do. And I think stamp duty holidays, there will be certain things, maybe, maybe you know, allowing the lenders. Remember, the government still owns a couple of these lenders. So they will loosen the money markets. They will loosen criteria um, massively. Affordability changing. See, there's not a... There's not a shortage of people wanting to buy. Guys, I speak to people daily. I would say next week from Monday to Friday, I'll speak to maybe 50 people. They all want to buy a house. 50 people. They all want to buy a house. Now, a lot of them can't afford it. Some of them have got issues. Some of them have credit problems. But they all want to buy a house. There's not a lack of people wanting to buy a house. Is the means to do it, okay? So how can that change? Well, the lending, all of a sudden, lenders can lend seven times your income. At the moment, who decides four and a half times income? Someone decided four and a half times income. Then they moved it to five times income. Then they moved it to five and a half times income. Or if you earn 100,000, you can do five and a half times income. Or if you've got 25% deposit, we'll give you five times income. So someone's decided that. So all tomorrow they could do is say, all right, we'll give you 10 times your income. Someone could decide that. Um, tax changes, they could reverse them. Tomorrow they can say, buy to let landlords, we'll give you a break for two years. They could do that. And all of those things will affect the market. But uh, yeah, ONS, here we go. Someone says ONS, so what's the answer? What do you invest in 100K? Okay, what would I invest in? I don't know. I don't know, that's why I'm asking the question. Uh, it, it, it's interesting because I've got investments in different things. And I don't necessarily think property has actually probably done the best for me in the last 15 years. I've got shares, I've got stocks, I've got you know various things, but I think property has generally done quite well for me. But I don't know if that's going to be the, the case. If I had 100k fresh right now to put in, and that's why I, I, I would be, I don't know. I don't know. And that's why I, I asked the question. Uh, yeah. Would you have it abroad? Okay, probably the best to wait. Uh, yeah, I think I think I think we will see by the end of the year. I think by about October, we will see a settled market, a more settled market. Okay, and at the moment, you know, I'd sit tight, see what happens. If there's a deal out there, get it. Um, and but yeah, I'd sit tight and see how it all works out. 
you know, it's, it's interesting. You, you watch one channel, they say, oh, property market's 35%, it's going to come down. You watch another channel, it's going, oh, I've bought, I had one property and I've now got 15 properties. And you watch another channel and says, oh, I spent, I, I invested 5,000 pounds and now I'm a multi-millionaire in crypto. Internet's a funny thing. Anyway, guys, have a wonderful evening. Enjoy yourselves. Um, I've actually enjoyed this. I might do more lives like this, although it's a bit waffly, but you know. I'm sorry if it's been boring, but uh, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, yeah, how was this? You could buy a holiday home in a favorite destination. Come to yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You could do that, and you could probably make the best of both worlds there. Anyway, guys, have a great one. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you hopefully on the next live. Let me know if you want another live. We'll do another one in the next couple of days. Take care. All the best. Cheers.